Hi YouTubers, I might have to do this one in two parts. The uh, the size of this is uh, 24 inches by by 20 inches. It's the largest knife painting I've done ever. I've done several of this size and I'm doing this one to replace one that I sold last week. But I won't do it exactly the same. Just trying to get my photograph to come on my stupid little tablet. I might am Anyway, I'll start. Uh, I, this takes a bit of uh, getting used to the uh, size of this and the flimsy board is a 32 millimeter MDF. No, I'm not nearly there with this little tagger. It's not worn it out. It's had it slowly been on me really. Right, okay. I'll show you the the one I sold. I'm just waiting for it to enlarge. It's so slow. Right, there we are. So I want you to see it before I start. I'm going to full screen. All right, there we are. Can you can you see that? I sold that one on Wednesday evening, a dinner party. And I liked it so much that I, I can't bear to do that really. So it's, it's a, probably the best one I've ever done. So I'm going to start filling in the sky. It might take a while, so bear with me. And I hope I don't get my head in the way too much. I might have to move that. No, I can't move that over. So we'll have a sort of a, a, a slightly blue sky. Just a, just a, I don't want the sky to, to be dominant in this. And then I can put some clouds in. Okay, once I get this. I've got a lovely frame, very old frame, gallery frame, that I was sort of given when I was working for the Webster Gallery in Oxshot years ago, just to display my paintings in before photo photographing them. It's a very old frame, it's very battered, but it's a lovely antique type. I don't want to go right to the edge. I think my hand my wrist will give out before the paint does. But it's a just a wonderful way of of painting. It's so natural. You know you You're right into it. I've not put any gesso on the board. I've just gone straight in with on, on the primed MDF. I rubbed it down with sandpaper and, and then just primed it with PVA glue, dilute PVA glue. Just roughly follow that contour. I'm I'm not making any great attempt to. Uh, copy what was there before but it would be very similar. I hope it would be very similar. And as I come down I can add in a bit of ochre. Oh, because I'm not doing any detail I can I can use both hands. I'm not ambidextrous, far from it, but, but you, there's some things you can do like, like this just takes a bit of the pressure off the net. You know my watch? Twelve pounds that was in as Sainsbury's a few months ago, but it still keeps perfect time. My little cashier fell off my wrist and, and a car ran over it. I'm not into jewelry. But I do like the antique roadshow. 
all the guys do. There's a lovely uh, program on BBC uh, about seven o'clock. Um, it's where people take uh, the repair shop. It's I think it's in uh, oh, it's, in, it's uh, Will, the Wild the Wild Museum. It's uh, down in Kent. It's a wonderful uh, collection of medieval houses or historical houses. They've been moved to a permanent location together. Singleton Man or something like that. Uh, we've been there twice over the years and and they've got this thatched workshop, very large, and people t take in suitable items to be repaired. I mean, yesterday or the day before yesterday was an uh, old case, an old trunk, a leather trunk, fabulous. That was in sorry state, made, made beautiful repair. It looked like a gold fob watch, family heirloom. They make parts, they're so clever, these guys, these artisans, watchmaking, all sorts, repairing of ceramics. I can't remember if I've seen a painting being restored. But it's lovely to see the owners come back and be reunited with their family heirloom and the joy of just the, seeing their faces. Yeah. Let's just get some nice sweepings. Don't want the background to show through. So if you get a little bit of a sandy lump in your, in your paint, and it annoys you when you go over it. Oh, can't measure out. So you use a lot of little white in the sky like this. But I've got a great big tube of it. And but I would like to finish it in one long session if I can. Or at least get it to a finished state that I can publish it. And then work on it a bit maybe. Down there. Where it collides with the pencil, I can thin that down a bit. It's a bit of heavy lead there where I did the drawing. Okay, that's just a rough in there. Lovely earth colours for this. The greys would be probably burnt umber, ultramarine, yellow ochre, white, load of white. You see, I've, I've got my palette, my oil palette, underneath this greaseproof paper and just clipped. Then when I finish, I can just throw the whole lot away without having to clean my palette. Can't really help that. It's such a big board and a little webcam. It's a lovely webcam, I'd say. Yeah, 
think I'm getting better with setting it up. Sound is, is, is notoriously not very good on, on this particular model. I don't know what to do about that other than spend yet more money on a, a microphone, which I will do that. But with all the expense of the paints and the flashes, I've just spent 40 pounds on a set of brushes. One set of Frank Clark watercolour brushes, I want to try those. I have the Hake, a small Hake and a Rigger. And see how it compares with the Ron Rance and one that I've been using for, well, the type I've been using for many years. Although the, the style of the Hake now is a lot different to when I first got on to Ron Ranson. 30 odd years ago. And I want to put some other colours in this in there. Uh, let's mix up just a little bit. bit of, just a bit of variety. Mixing a bit of yellow ochre with some white over this in there. Don't take your clouds up and over a contour. Go behind. Bit of ochre. Let's warm it up as we come to the, the horizon. <laughs> My great hero, I have a look on Google, is Sir Catherine. Got K Y F F I N, Catherine Williams, a man from Ang Anglesey, Wales. I've got a little headland there with a greeny field on the top. Fill in some of those holes. You always start from the back and work forward, or we'll start from the top, because you'll, otherwise you'll get your fingers all messed up, and then you'll get angry. I get angry, especially with computing. Oh. I was I put just put um, three acrylic videos on Patreon. You can see the trailers. I might of course the bit of cancer change there. Blend that a little bit. Put that will come in there. Don't want to, uh, to complicate this sky. Just, just enough. A 
you can overkill with your clouds and, and that's probably even that is overkill. So let's just merge it a little bit. Just a little bit of variety in the flat area. Okay, just a little bit up here. Right, now the fun begins. Oh well, let's just put some back in here. It's a bit even. That thing is, if you're using some Griffin paints, and like, and I put some Griffin white in with the ordinary student white. Then if you leave it to go to, to the uh, the knife marks go hard, you can't work on it other than with a brush, of course. All right now we've got to come down with these slopes. So let's get some some grey mixed up. Got plenty of white in there. More blue. Blades. So I want to just come down there with some grey. So a bit of in there. Moving the changes, you don't want a lot of flat areas. Darks, umber, or burnt, umber and blue. It's not to be exact with all this. But just just the really colours. Add lights to it later on when you start modelling the actual shape of some of the rocks. You'd be surprised how difficult that is. Now we've got some nice light in there. So we're basing this on on a Welsh coastal inlet, so somewhere around Pembrokeshire. Well, we've been on had several holidays there. Oh, well, Wales is a beautiful place. Everybody in Wales can sing. Not just sing, but wow. Well, Try 
charm the birds out of the trees. I'll feed in a bit of green in some of that. I won't go too thick now. Deep, and I'm not. I'm not sure I really like it. I think I can, my my ordinary pastello is the is the, is the best, but this is sort of wearing out. This one, it's getting a bit stiff. But not me. But these these two hundred mil tubes of winter paints are quite readily available. They work the same. I just want to put a bit of a a bit of a headband in here. Just just yellow and a bit of ultramarine. Just change, don't have the same flat colour everywhere. If you ask if you ever do this, use different colours just to stop it getting monotonous. And I'll get a little bit of shadow under there. Okay, that's it. That's just a. Uh, just change the shape of that, it's concave and convex. Oh no, it's just a bit of a dark headband. Well, it's just a tip. You can get the right old mess of this. Sorry if I'm masking. Masking, not asking. There's a bit of a dull, dull green stroke here. Using palette grey, really sure my head's not where I'm painting, but I don't think it is. Come into some. Oh, we we'll have, we'll have lights in there, and I'll kind of change that with with some dark dark outline on that headland there. Okay, well that'll do for a minute. If you do get into this, your knives over years will get very, very sharp. Don't buy cheap knives. Okay. Right, so let's put in a bit of shape on some of this. Okay. 
Right, okay. There was some real good darks now. First year ultra red, that gives a fantastic dark. Black almost. I don't really go against the, uh, the light there. Lots of minerals in the rocks. Lots of different colours. What we're trying to do is to make it look like it's a rock when in fact it's just a piece of paint. There's a lot of knife, a uh, lot of white. So even if you skip on the, the small tubes, of, by buying small tubes of colours, don't skimp on the white. You will use so much more. Some of that greeny color. Get a bunch of that open there. See what I mean? How are we doing there? Just have a look. So a lot of the full to cover, but uh, Richard Mulgrave, the Aussie guy, he uh, paints a huge size, and he's got knives the size of icing palette. Uh, what do you call them? Spatulas. And he goes out and paints the, the Australian Outback. Whoa! What a guy. Oh, no, that's just... Look at the counter change there. Grey. Loads of green now. Huh? 
Oh, that was not the right cut. And come down here. Now I've come to these these rocks here. Put some dark around that rock, these rocks, and then we can counterchange some lights. Put a green color in there, green gray, right. Like Cornwall, you've got a lot of granite rocks or even sandstone rocks, but a lot of scree, and it's all just tumbling down. Down the, you get a lot of rain, it just loosens it all. Right, there's some good darks going here. Just warm up a little bit.
it all just depends how skillful you are and how much detail you want to, want to put in. Just that green colour. There we be the strokes, the direction, colour, muted greens, shadowy greens. Try to give a bit of perspective to it without actually making a portrait of anything because you don't have portraits. I hope you're enjoying watching this. Oh, yeah. My wrist is aching now. Oh, we'll just leave a bit of that. Let's go on to the other side. Do a bit of that. So we can see the rides together at the bottom. Right, so lots of dark, stark. I run out of uh, burnt under in my my old. tube but I scavenged around my boxes of oil paints and I found some older stuff perfectly usable I can modify this The negative space there, the negative shape. All right, uh, go back, greedy. Stuff there. It's a little bit light there. Oh, 
sort of come down there a little bit. Yeah. No, that's not going to work, is it? Sticking out there. Oh, that's a bit of, of brewery colour. Just try to blur it a little bit just to put the distance, the aerial perspective. There, so just go up there a little bit. Mm -hmm. change that shape there. Not happy with that. Yeah. Make it a good bit that. Uh -huh. Right now we've got another grey green. Just pat it, pat it grey. Blue. A little bit white. And we'll put a slope. Oh, my thumb's gone. Slope coming down here. Come over.
Put some rocks in there with some weight. That's what I do now. Sorry for masking. Put in some white water there. But you really have to, when you start this, you really, oops, you really have to finish. Not sure I can do that. Um, Right, well, we'll think about that. I might have to carefully just put a slightly bit of difference. There's a bit of ochre there or something. Right, let's carry on with these greens and these lovely slopes here. So mixing a bit of amber and the green. And you might have a good bit of green shadow in there. The sand should be the easiest bit because it's a mixture of amber and yellow ochre and white. Right, let's just get these, get that beach in there. Big rocks. Right, so I've got a green coming down there. A bit of shadow area. So now the green. White. I learned all this by doing it. You know, I've never had a, any formal art lessons. I 
not a virtue. Grey greens. Just bring the changes. You can adjust it once you read colour and you can you can add to it. So I'm not trying to be clever with it, I just give a few highlights. Probably just a little bit of this. The shadowy stuff. Just trying to create an impression of something going on in there but left to one's imagination because I can't right, yellow ochre good old yellow ochre Darks. And some rocks and stuff coming through. A bit of red in there. Don't you come down further with that grey stuff? Okay, I'll go back to the other side now. Then I'll put a bit of sand in. Okay. 
Just scraping off the pilot, it's pilot grays. Okay, now the nearly there for this step. Oh, you cramped in the fingers. Not surprised. Right, let's do some uh, sand. Right, get another burn on that. Lump of yellow oak cut. And a lump of white. Now, there's going to be shadow under some of this. So I can put a little bit of blue in. Looking there. Right, more, looks more white. It's a bit different from a 10 by 8 inch picture, isn't it? Need a lot of, lot of tissue.
Sai bene se brucia. And the sand is much lighter over here. So then that rock. All right, let's get some more rocks. Yeah. A bit darker behind the leaves because they're a little bit in the shadow. And as we come into the light, we can add more ochre. If you hit this on the board, here down here, it doesn't really matter so much, it does in the sky, it looks just a bit obvious. I hope I get as far as putting it in the frame, a bit of a messy job, but it doesn't make days to dry. But I think you all do it, don't you? As soon as you finish your painting, stay in the frame. Wow, it looks so much better, doesn't it? I 
I'll have to model that rock in a minute. It'll take a couple of minutes to put it in the frame. But the sands have become lighter as we come into the light. There's a dark shadow close to that rock. The four paintings I've done today, they're all great paintings. But then I'm demonstrating, I'm not trying to make a, anything for posterity, although that would be nice. Oh, well, was that rude? I'm just keeping the mile to the edge of it, free of paint or tan. Right, let's just go a bit of darker. A bit of light, a bit of light grey, a bit lighter than that. Eh? Doesn't look much like a rock, do they? Darken rather than lighten there. Right, well, that's sort of more is covered, isn't it? It's a bit of titivating down there. On those rocks, maybe. Space, the blue. Oh. Do for there. Right, let's just get a bit of, bit of white in there.
Uh, I don't know if I can do much with that. But I probably could if I just put a bit of dark. Right, well I will put it in a few in the frame. And then I will see if I can. I have to know this. It weighs twice as much now. Put that right up. Alright, oh, it's getting funny. You might have to move the camera back so that you can see it. And put a couple of little tacks on it. Hold it in, hold on. <clears throat> right, okay, that's the frame on the table. Ooh, if I drop this. Carpet for you, carpet types. Now I know it fits, so let's make some, some tacks in just to hold it over. That's good. Three, four. I just use veneer pins for this. Can't tell you how many paintings uh, I've done. That's all the Venice paints I did, but mostly this size frame 34 by 20. Right, okay. There we are, that's uh oh, oh, waste of time. <coughs> Move that out of the way. Right, now I've shine it shined off. Uh well what's your bag? Uh The lead on this isn't very very long, so I'll just put it there. So there it is. Well we managed it didn't we? In a reasonable amount of time. So I hope you enjoyed that. I'll probably titivate it here and there. But that's it. That's it, that's going on YouTube. So Hope you enjoyed all the effort I put into that. Uh, all out now. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye bye.